In the near future, there is no privacy. Our every memory is recorded and replayable in our iPhone brains. But when a rare unstoppable murder occurs, the police only suspect is a beautiful Amanda Zafri, who subverted the system and is damn near untraceable. Clive Owens, who plays a detective, must go undercover to get close to her. I'd like to go undercover too then. So let's review Anon, which I assume is cool slang for anonymous. Owens plays Sal, a detective whose cover would be easily blown if it wasn't for Amanda Zafri's character sticking to the script. Her character is known as The Girl because why come up with a cool unique name like Saffron? We get introduced to the concept of the world, everything Sal sees is identified, and when somebody lies to him, he can pull up a record and reveal the truth. So now we have a hacking crime. People's brains, man, being hacked, blinded, so the only thing they can see is what the killer sees. So kind of like those POV videos I've heard about. They put a gun to the person's head and fire. The victims are so confused they mount zero offense. I could fight better blind. I mean, how many of you have screen watched your buddy while playing video games and used that to your advantage to take him out? I mean, I'm just saying it's possible. Now, I don't know if this is a contractual thing with Clive Owen, and I will say I really enjoy my King Arthur, and we'll get to that one soon but it seems like he has to have sex in every single one of his movies. And this one's no different. This one I assume he's having sex with his girlfriend, except he's not really in the moment, which, you know, would be totally happening here because technology, we just bury our heads in cell phones and stuff. Never really pay attention to that social events. Don't try to find me. Look and you are dead. She won't leave me alone. At this point, I kind of predicted one of Sal's problems he's going to run into. Like, how do you know what you're seeing is what you're actually seeing, whether you're living with a filter on or whether somebody's showing you something else. Also, how do you hack someone's eyes? I mean, I guess we're just going to have to ignore that for story point, but they're organic. Owens likes to watch a lot of clips of his son, even his son's own death. Then he drunk dials his ex-wife to talk about it, but we get the sense that's why she left him because he won't let old wounds heal. Then we get a POV of a couple of girls having sex and then we see the gun reminding us we're still watching the movie. Owens does get to the scene quicker this time and chases the killer. We see Zayfri, but maybe it's my heart. I just don't think it's her throughout this whole movie. And then his brain gets hacked and he starts seeing extra steps when he's running down the subway and he trips and falls, manages to get away by using other things to hack his brain. Anonymity is the enemy. We gotta find out how she does it. You're going undercover. So she's seen him, but Sal wants to go undercover to hire her to delete memories from his mind. So they put out an ad after his boss hired a couple of cyber hackers to put false memories into his mind that will only hold up if she doesn't look too far back. Thankfully, that's one of her rules, only see what they want her to see. So in this masterful undercover plan, Sal has to have sex with a hooker, do some coke, and then get her to delete it so his imaginary girlfriend doesn't find out. Convenient, Owens. Convenient. He does ask too many questions though, so she pulls a gun on him and then deletes memory of the whole encounter. What about people with memories of you? Like me. You can't get rid of memories. I can think of a way. So the tech guys manage to hack her frequency while all this is going on, and then they creepily watch her feed as she goes about her day and eats and, you know, gets naked because that's what perverts do. So when she cuts her feed, they finally figured out that it's her past employers, people that have hired her to do jobs, that are dying. So naturally, they want to send Sal back undercover. Why not just arrest her, you ask? That's a good question. And although the script is leading us to believe she's doing it, and despite my feelings, there's actually no proof for it. So she comes over and he wants her to delete his cocaine memories, of which he still has several lines on the table, so they do them together. Then she points the gun at him again and be like, are you sure you have a girlfriend? Because you're acting like a guy who doesn't have a girlfriend. And then she kisses him and they have sex. What is this, like the third girl now, Clive? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's in his contract. Now she goes to delete the events of which if I'm Sal, I'm like, please don't take that away from me. But instead she finds his cover up and angrily leaves. His buddy next door is shot and they all think it's her. I guess it makes sense. She had a gun and she did threaten, don't screw her over or else. Sal gets suspended from the force a couple of times, and while he's sitting at home, he gets terrorized by visions of rats and fire and his son's memories getting deleted. She's vindictive. You'd be surprised what people want to pretend never happened. Close our eyes to pray, kiss, dream, or break the law. If only they told her why they're investigating her, 
Then she wouldn't storm off and they'd probably get along, but they avoided that logic. She could easily alibi out if she's innocent and just show video clips of what she was doing during those times of the murder. I think this is a good place to stop with the spoilers, just in case you do want to watch it. There are some interesting twists, and I do like the two leads, but as you can tell, I just never really bought into the concept. I think showing us how the world worked in the beginning was a good idea, but then it became repetitive. And they should have explained the science of how this is all happening, even if you have to make it up. Like, how does someone not see what's going under their eyes? Like, does it go full screen or something? I don't know. I would have sided with Safe Reed's character because sometimes you can advance technology too far, and I love what she said. It's not that I have something to hide. I have nothing I want you to see. So overall, I think there's some value to this movie. It doesn't have a big movie budget because it's made for streaming services, and there are parts that are slow, but it's acted well, and there are thought-provoking messages in this, which is sometimes nice. But I don't think they nailed the concept, which the movie kind of hinges on. But if you've seen it, let me know what you thought, and if the concept worked for you, and if you'd marry Amanda Zayfried like I would, and as always, thanks for watching.